Hello and welcome to Cricket on Air, America's premium cricket show. I'm Shri and today we have a very very special guest with us. A fast bowler from India who genuinely intimidated the batsmen with his pace and bounce. A wholehearted cricketer for Delhi, he even scored 100 in the Ranji Trophy. Friends, our guest today is Atul Vasan. Himanshu and me caught up with Atul Vasan during his recent trip to the United States. Atul, thank you so much for talking to Cricket on Air. Uh, thank you, it's my pleasure. So, l- let me begin by asking you this. Uh, India just won the World Cup right now. It, India won this World Cup after 28 long years. What were rea- your reactions <laughs> about it? You know, I, I was nostalgic because I just was wondering where I was when India won in 1983. I was on Mall Road in Chimla. And okay. I was only, I think, 14 years old then, you know. And that's how actually that egged me on to really take up the game. I was already playing it at a junior level. But, you know, that the thrill, you can't describe it, you know. And, uh, you know, the, you get goose bumps, you know. Uh, but again, I was there. Uh, in, in Mumbai, I was covering the match, I was doing commentary, I was doing shows and I joined the guys uh, for partying. We were partying till 7 o'clock oh, wow. and uh, you know, I was drinking champagne out of the cup, you know, so <laughs> it was an amazing feeling, you know, and uh, you know, seeing Sachin so happy. I still remember our first two together in Pakistan. You know, and we were roommates actually in Australia and New Zealand as well. So, oh, really? Uh, yeah. Wow. So, you know, I was just thinking back to all those times, and then, you know, I felt so happy for him because this is what he really wanted. He, yeah, I know he didn't doesn't um, hold his uh, his records, or but this meant so much to him, and, and you know, that's what he told me. Awesome, awesome. Let me tell you. Let me ask you this. You said you went to parties with the Indian cricketers. <laughs> tell us a few <laughs> details about that. You know, I mean, uh, they came. By the time uh, I left the ground, I couldn't reach the because the whole of Mumbai was standstill. Awesome. All the cars on the road, nobody could move. So people were jumping around, and you know, the scenes. I've never seen those scenes. You know, and I probably thought that this could be uh, for the youth of India. You know, uh, just the push they needed because right. there was so much pride on the streets of Mumbai that day. You know, I can't tell you the feeling, and uh, I think so many. Many boys must have been motivated by looking at the history, and I'm sure Indian cricket is on the right track because uh, in 1983. Uh, got few, so many boys starting up cricket and Sachin also uh, was very little and he remembers that and then he went on so you can imagine now with cricket being so big how many young kids will take it up seriously and what is the quality of cricketers will get in 5-7 years so I think Indian team will dominate world cricket for, for a few years now Time for a quick break friends we'll continue our discussion with Atul on the other side of this break stay tuned Welcome back to Cricket on Air, friends. We are having a free and frank discussion with former India fast bowler Atul Vasan. So, Atul, uh, let's let's talk about you a bit. Uh, in 1990-91, that's when you uh, you know made way into the international scene, and you made way with quite a bang. Uh, I, I take it because you had a very successful New Zealand tour, and also you had a pretty good English tour as well. And uh, after that, you know, the Asia Cup victory, right? Uh, some moments about that that you that you realized still? You know, those were the t- times where, you know, it was very hard to get in the Indian team because, you know, the players were well set. Now, because of the too much cricket players are getting injured, taking rest, you know, so there are many opportunities for the second string. There, if you are not in the 11, then I was a water boy for maybe 25 test matches. But it was hard because Manoj and Kapil were playing and only two fast bowlers used to play. Right. So, and then, uh, you know, so it was, it was a time, but, you know... Uh, now I can judge that those were not good times because we were not dominating. Whenever we used to tour abroad, we were expected to lose and we used to lose the first test match. But now it's not the same. I think the players have got a feeling that if they go, they know that they are a better team and that's what it shows. You know, even players like Virat Kohli is from my cricket academy. I've been grooming him since he was 11 years old. Wow. You know, and then I've seen the progress, the confidence, the aggression is amazing because he played under 19, became captain, you know, and the strut, the swagger is there because he has won the World Cup. He came back and he was a different person, you know. He knows that he's just so confident. He says, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get a hundred today, you know. So this kind of confidence is amazing. Right. You know, within the team sport, the personal achievement also and the personal confidence stands out now. This never used to be there then. There were always few players in the team who doubted their own ability. The conviction right. was not there. To be very brutal, I must say, you know, <laughs> I'm being very candid about it, but this was, this is the truth. Right. So, speaking of the uh, English tour, for example, uh, you bowled to some great batsmen like Graham Gooch. And you know you also bowled to none other than uh, David Gower. How was it? How, what was the feeling when you would you know go on the run up and uh, yeah. about to uh, charge? Yeah, I've got a couple of fond memories. You know I got injured in the first uh, Test match. I didn't play. 
I was supposed to play in the morning and I, I twisted my ankle the Lord's Test match and I was the 12th man and uh, and that game Graham Gooch got 333 runs and then scored a 140 in the second innings and right. we lost as well so right. uh, but the third test match I remember playing and and I'll tell you incident you know I was uh, and I, I became fit towards the end of the tour and it was a good pacey wicket in oval so I was uh, and I was really letting it because the other side Devin Malcolm bowled a lot of bounces so our team was saying, you know, we should also give it back to them, and I was the quickest in the team. So it's okay. So I was just bowling bounces, and and uh, David Shepherd and and Dicky Bird were the umpires, and I got warned for bowling too many bounces. And at tea time, I got David Gower out, I think, and David Gower was struggling to get back, and Ashes Tour team was to be announced, you know. So I, uh, uh, Sunil Gavaskar was commentating. He said, "I shook my hand." Says, "Today is the happiest day of my life." This is why <laughs> this is the first time ever an Indian bowler has been warned for intimidatory bowling. All right. you know, <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for sharing that, Atul. Time for a quick break, friends. We'll continue our discussion with Atul on the other side of this break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Cricket On Air friends and today we are having a free and frank discussion with former India fast bowler Atul Vasan. All your test matches have been away from India. Yeah. Uh-huh. So uh, do you miss ever playing in India the test matches part? Not really. You know it was a common fact that in India um, at best Indian team could afford to play only two fast bowlers. And that two couple was a magnificent all-rounder. Manoj used to open the batting. Right. So you know I mean, this, and the spinners used to do the business for India. Three spinners used to play. Correct. So I think uh, that was very hard for a third bowler to play a test match in India. I think still it's the true. Indian team still doesn't play with three fast bowlers in Indian conditions. Right. He is wasted. The third guy gets wasted because uh, out of the 100 overs in a day, 70 overs are bowled by the spinners. So, okay. uh, so I think, I, but I mean, it was a given. But uh. you wouldn't have liked to play in uh, like on Feroz Shah Kotla and in front uh, of your home ground. Yeah, Feroz Shah Kotla has been a hard grind. I played 12 years for Delhi, I, you know, and I I played over 100 first class games. And I tell you, I was six foot four, and now I'm six foot three because I, uh, Kotla took half an inch off me. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> so on that tour of England, I think Sachin scored his first ever Test match hundred, right? Yeah, yeah. What was the feeling like then? You know, before that, I'll, I must take you back uh, uh, in Napier Test match, uh, just the series before that, and Sachin uh, was batting at uh, 80, 80, 80, and I know he came out for T, and he says, I was telling him, you know, uh, come on here, you know, you could, can, yeah, yeah, I'm just thinking, don't talk to me, don't tell me about the hundred, let me just concentrate because if he would have scored that hundred, he would have been the youngest uh, centurion. Right. right. But he got out at 88, and he came back, and he was weeping. The, I could, you know, he, tears were coming out. So I said, come on, you know, this is the only the fourth or fifth test match. You'll get plenty of opportunities, you know. But eventually, when we went went to the next tour, uh, he didn't get many in the first test match. Uh, the second test match was in Manchester, the Old Trafford, and I, uh, I was telling him, you know, and when, before that match, we went out for dinner, and he was just saying that you know I'm batting well, and you know he got a hundred against Leicester, just going up to Old Trafford. So he was in good touch. And uh, and there it was, you know, he got his first hundred, and and it was a match-saving hundred. You know, exactly. Manoj batted well. We were about to lose the Test match, so yeah, it was exciting to be there. <laughs> about the youngsters nowadays, I, uh, we have mentioned a bit about them, but who would you pick as the most promising one in the Indian team currently? It has to be Virat Kohli. No, I mean he's the next big thing, I think, and uh, I'm so glad to see his development. You know, I remember the first day, uh, actually, and that academy. I'm the chief patron, but I, I never go there very often. Uh, it is run by one of my dear friends who used to play first class cricket with me, called Rajkumar Sharma, who's the coach there. And I just go when we pick up the boys and all. You know, once in a while I used to go. And he used to say, "I've got a guy called Virat. You know, you must come." And he's a young guy, but he's amazing. You know, you must come. So he always used to say, "Okay, I'll come and watch him." He's a, they are two brothers, so you come and watch. So Virat and Virat's elder brother used there. So uh, incidentally, his father and mother were there. His father is no more now, and but his father was there that day, and and I and, and I bowled at him, you know. Oh. And he was a young kid, you know. He was just getting in line, and I was amazed to see, you know, that he was not scared facing up to somebody like me. He was only 12 years old. So, you know, and, and the other brother was very ordinary. So I told his father, don't waste your time on this one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this, is the one, this is the guy, you know. And, and, you know, it's very hard to say that you see a talent and the talent becomes what he eventually does, you know. It's amazing. So it's just uh, talent along with hard work also. The guy is really hard working. He's really focused now. Lost a bit of focus few years ago, you know, when fame, money and, you know, everything comes in. Right. Young kids are not mature enough to handle that. Yep. Right. He's been through and now he knows what is the value. And it's, it's great to see him. You know, he's captain of Royal Challenges Bangalore now, he's a young kid. 
and he was worried to take it up and he called me saying that should I take it up because there are a lot of test players and big players I said yeah, you should just go ahead and take it you know why if if you are the only player they have retained you Correct. can imagine yeah. you know so it's so glad to see that people showing faith in him and you can see that he's um, taking it well he's you know he's taking the responsibility time for a quick break friends we'll continue our discussion with atul on the other side of this break stay tuned Welcome back to Cricket on Air friends I'm your host Shree and today we are having a free and frank discussion with former India fast bowler Atul Wasan You mentioned briefly about Virat Kohli losing focus in between one of the things that was said about him was maybe he's a little arrogant um and maybe success has come to him in a in, too early yeah. he won the under 19 world cup for india he was yeah. the captain uh-huh. and you know everyone was talking about yeah. him as the next big thing mm. do you think that might be a problem that he had or maybe he has overcome now and or that might hamper him in the future no no he's overcome that he, he admits it that there was a problem you know and, and you get psycho fans you know people who will give you you know uh, you know just false confidence yeah. sometimes you know and oh. you feel that you're really big and as a 19 year old you can't expect everybody to be sure. really mature sure. but once he went down that path when he went to a national cricket academy had a few incidents there and if, after that he's he realized you know that he'll be wasting his talent if he just gets you know sucked in by that and uh, the results are there for everybody to see you know sure. he is he played he was never an opener when he played for india first in sri lanka he was made to open the batting he took that job you know and he was batting number 3 the kind of innings he played in world cup I and mean, in the final inning he's 35 the 100 run partnership with gambhir i right. think one of the game yeah. dhoni finished it yeah. but these guys actually kept us there yeah. otherwise yes. the game was over Yes. Agreed. Yeah. And he's saying all the right things. I remember his comment <laughs> after oh, the yeah, World Cup. So cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, when he said that you know Sachin has carried yeah. India for uh, so. India on his shoulders for 21 years. It's about time that we carry him on our shoulders. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean these are like um, um, you know nice things, and Sachin also must feel nice about it. So the youngsters, actually these youngsters, he is he's God for them. And you can imagine right. you're sitting in the same dressing room. I mean I could tell you the feeling when I played for India. There was Kapil Dev there, and we were playing a Richard Hadley. I had Richard Hadley's post in my room since i was a kid the fan <laughs> and suddenly i'm playing against him so i can actually tell you what he feel uh, he must be feeling right now we feel the same way meeting you right now i was atul. going to say that <laughs> i was going to say that <laughs> so atul the other big question that is doing the rounds throughout india and maybe throughout the cricketing world is the debate about ipl versus the country yeah. whether players play for the ipl get injured and then probably don't play for the country or the case of chris gale where he played a superb knock yeah. knocks in the ipl but is not selected for west indies yeah. what are your thoughts about that you know it's a very contentious issue um, i have had a lot of debates with a lot of people who feel that players are letting themselves down by uh, not playing for india and playing ipl you know and i really feel for the players because if i get to secure my future right. by playing uh, f- this frivolous cricket and you know i might shock a few people by saying ipl is frivolous cricket it is uh, 2020 is is something like a fast food you know it's not like a fine dining meal like a test match or a gourmet meal you know where you can savor it for days it's just it's instant gratification you know so so players can just do without uh, the pressure of international cricket of test cricket and all and secure themselves for 10 years you know you can make the money in 45 days what you get to make in playing test cricket for 5 uh, years and then that pressure on your body because players have got a limited time frame so you got to think from their uh, view point as well and i think uh, if fans are too harsh in judging the players you know if the player can manage him uh, no player will be fit to play all year round that's right. it, this is a fact now so the players have to pace and they have to judge and i'm sure all the players know that playing test cricket is the ultimate but if it can cost them 3 years of ipl and then once they're out who's going to look after them Right. you know i mean so uh, you know this brings a parity to the thing that if some players have taken a rest i am with them uh, if some players got injured i mean it's a part of the game they will get injured if some people are using uh, this west indies tour as rehabilitation or recuperation so so be it you know because time for a quick break friends we'll continue our discussion with atul on the other side of this break stay tuned Welcome back to Cricket on Air friends I'm your host Shree and today we are having a free and frank discussion with former India fast bowler Atul Wasan what about players uh, who are 
who are right now in in the ranks who are trying to make their way up the or up the hierarchy and some of them might just say that you know i would just like to play the ipl i don't care if test matches i ever play test matches or not few players names that come to my mind you know quickly for example someone like a yusuf pathan i don't know looking at his cricket do you think he is really striving to play test cricket for india someday it doesn't his game doesn't suit test cricket it looks like See, let me tell you one thing. Every player versus all wants to play test cricket. Whether he's good enough to play test cricket is another point. Correct. If Yusuf Pathan is good in the short format, then he has to get better to play the test cricket. Uh, right now, he's not a test player. You can see that because he he can't just graft his way. Correct. Test cricket. I think a good test cricketer can become a good one day player and become a good twenty T twenty player. But otherwise, it's not possible. Right. So you know, it it's an exception if one of the good T twenty players becomes a good test player. But other way, you know, is no chance. So I think players have to evolve really to play a better grade of cricket. Uh, but the, you are right in one aspect where youngsters can get, uh, um, you know, just uh, impressed by IPL and just aim to play IPL only. Right. Said I, I can make it as a career. Let me a slam bang cricketer. But Indian board has done the right thing by putting only cap players in auctions. You know, so if you only play for India, then you get serious money. Right. So there is a lollipop there. You know, so all the players know that. So they have to strive to play <laughs> and get that cap before they can make money in IPL. Yeah. Okay. What about uh, Yuvraj Singh? I mean, we know that he has abundance of talent. There's no dearth of talent in, in Yuvraj. You know, he has proved himself multiple times. Yet, the holy grail of Test cricket is still, you know, seems a little far away. What would you? What is your uh, opinion on that? I mean, there's no doubt that uh, Yuvraj is an exceptional player. Whether he is an exceptional Test cricketer, I, I can't say that. But he is uh, one of the best cricketers I've seen. Uh, everybody can't be perfect, you know. He has got his own flaws. He's got his own fallibilities, and he agrees to it. You know that people expect too much from him. That you know, he says, "If I like to party, people take that against me. Mm. If I, if I've not been able to cement my place in Test cricket, you know, I've tried. I've been injured in the wrong times and all that. So he's got his own um, uh, excuses as well. But I feel that um, you know, he is um, he he has underachieved as a player. He could have been one of the top Test players also, but if he has not done that, but then he has achieved a lot in other forms of game. So I can't hold that against him. I can't expect him to be perfect and the way we I, we want him to be. You know, so uh, that makes him interesting. You know, because he's not perfect as Dhoni or Tendulkar. He is Yuvraj, and that's an enigma. You know that he's so good in one aspect, and suddenly next day he could be so ordinary. Speaking of uh, enigmas, uh, I, I come to the uh, the, the pace department uh, currently. You being a former pace bowler, uh, you know what are your what do you see as the future of Indian cricket in the pace department? Uh, one is for sure that we'll still struggle to have express bowlers. There are few um, young players coming through, but the kind and amount of cricket we are playing, uh, it's. Um, literally impossible for somebody to bowl quick right through, and players early enough uh, are uh, clever enough to know that if they keep on bowling fast stuff, they will just burn out in two years. So they try to pace themselves. Zaheer did that, and he's come back a clever bowler. I think it's the variation and what you can do with the ball will make you more successful just than raw pace. We saw raw pace. Sean Tate can go for 50 runs in five overs. You know, in only on odd days he can come and and deliver. We don't want that. Shoaib Akhtar has also been up and down. So the express pace bowlers have got their own beauty. We want them. But if you are not getting one till that time, we have to lump with whatever we've got. So I think Ishant is one guy I'm very hopeful of. He's been there. He's just about uh, ready to get his next step. Uh, and uh, Zaheer hanging around for a couple of years will help him. Plus we've got two three new bowlers. Umesh Yadav is one guy who's doing very well. We've got a couple of left arm a new guy, Arvind from Royal Challengers Bangalore. He seems to be a good bowler. So you know in that department we've got an IPL has thrown up a lot of talent. Now uh, the coaches and the National Cricket Academy is their responsibility to look after these bowlers, nurture. them give them the right opportunities uh, abhimanyu mithun is one guy who has come on so they'll take time to mature you know there's very rare you find gems like vakar or wasim you throw them in the first test match and they become match winners you know very rarely right. and is this doesn't happen in indian system time for a quick break friends we'll continue our discussion with atul on the other side of this break stay tuned Welcome back to Cricket on Air friends I'm your host Shri and today we are having a free and frank discussion with former India fast bowler Atul Wasan coming from a fast bowler you're saying that you know we should concentrate on spin that's an interesting I think yeah spinners uh, is where I think we're struggling we need top class spinners and Indian cricket's forte is spin bowling and I think not enough effort is and uh, Importance is given to finding another unearthing spinners. Too much focus on fast bowlers. We are not a fast bowling country, so we should rather 
you know um, concentrate on our core competence which is spin and talking of spin you know one of the things you mentioned that fast bowlers quickly realize that raw pace doesn't help them a lot in indian conditions one of the things that came to my mind was munaf patel became a big hit in india initially because he was the fastest bowler in india and last week there was a comment from joel garner i think mm. who said that munaf patel bowls spin mm. <laughs> so yeah so he you know he clever he he, he um you know elongated his career if he was bowling that he would have been he his back went and he was not he was not as effective as now so now he's clever he uses the wrist uses the seam you know and now look as he's he's successful three wickets two wickets every game so uh, the proof of the pudding is in eating it he's delivering it so right. i i can't complain on that <laughs> going on to another big enigma in indian cricket mahendra singh dhoni he has done almost everything that Yeah. anyone could even dream of he was won two, uh, the 2020 world cup the the 50 over world cup he's taken the side to the number 1 test ranking your thoughts about him as a captain uh, as a player and as a leader uh, i am just gobsmacked is amazed <laughs> at what this guy has achieved i still remember I, we were in nairobi actually then uh, india a team in pakistan a team and nairobi were having a triangle series i was uh, the presenter the lead commentator there and me and shrinath were doing the series as as commentators and experts and this guy was the second wicket keeper for the indian a team the first wicket keeper was naman oja naman oja got injured and this guy asked um, uh, uh, sandeep patel was the team manager says yeah this is a player we have got you know he's got long hair he used to wear orange gloves and he used to dive around but he can bat like crazy yaar he's a is a big hitter i said okay so uh, tomorrow we are we going to play him because naman oja is injured so he played he opened the batting got 100 next game he got 100 and i tell you you know really lit that tournament alight you know and suddenly mahindra singh dhoni and you know I'm, we spent a lot of evening not nothing much to do in nairobi so we used to sit together play in takshri in the clubhouse and then <laughs> he's fond of kishor kumar songs you know so he's a very interesting character and then he wanted to come really but suddenly everybody got to know him and he wanted to have a contract so i suggest his name to latika khaneja who used to manage uh, virinder sevak that there's a player he wants to have a contract do you want to sign him up and she, she said no no i'm very busy with uh, these three four players so i don't have time i said fine so i told my that you just wait on you know so when he played for india then latika called me so then he got 100 against pakistan so can i sign him up i said forget about him now he's you know you you missed the bus <laughs> but from there on what he has achieved you know then st- got his place in one day in test matches started batting the way he did became number one player in odi rankings then uh, became the captain one day then the test match then winning the t20 so this guy has not put a set and i tell you he's zen like he's buddha on the field you know anything goes around him is just the same i've never seen anybody like him in in my 25 years of uh, being associated with the game he, i mean i can't express it the way he manages the boy he's a, he's a brilliant man manager uh, might be low on finesse but effective and that's what you want time for a quick break friends we'll continue our discussion with atul on the other side of this break stay tuned Welcome back to Cricket on Air friends. Today we are having a free and frank discussion with former India fast bowler Atul Wasan. Well, you do definitely need some somebody like Mahendra Singh Dhoni leading the calm personality that he is when you have especially somebody like Shrishant mm. on the bowling mark. Mm. So, uh, your thoughts on, you know, if you were uh, in, in the shoes of Dhoni and uh, you know, you being a senior fast bowler how would you coach somebody like shrishant you know when he's struggling with his form or going through his i mean you know uh, as a captain you are always ready that few players will always struggle in the team or 11 will not be uh, at their best at any given time a good captain is one who understands that and manages that player and takes him through that tough period and with his resources the guy is doing well take the teams through and still deliver that's what dhoni has been doing there been two three players who let him down but he manages them so well right. uh, sri sant is a good bowler i think he has got a um, uh, lot to offer to indian cricket especially in test cricket he has got lovely action he's got pace you know uh, yes he's flamboyant you know and probably that's that adds to his character so you can't actually totally kill it but if he can tame it you can talk to him and you can manage him and then he can deliver but dhoni um, you, you you know at times one guy was struggling with zahir khan struggled at time but then even zahir sagar he moves to plan b then he's got a plan c and that's the secret of a good captain you know awesome 
that that's great actually one more thing that really struck me during all this conversation has been the the big contribution of delhi towards indian cricket nowadays yeah, yeah. gambhir ishan sharma Amazing. virat kohli no shikhar dhawan shikhar dhawan <laughs> yeah. so and yeah. of course sehwag yeah, yeah. amit mishra yeah, i think yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, the, the no, Delhi yeah. Delhi cricket culture has been very strong. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't win the domestic cricket so so many times, but we've always been there. But suddenly, you know, with the, with Virendra Sehwag and Gautam Gambhir coming through, and then Virat joining and Ishan joining. I was I remember I was a chief selector for uh, Delhi team, and Ishan and Virat were playing under 19, and there was tremendous pressure that to keep them in under 19, not play them in in in, uh, in Ranji Trophy, and I could agree with that. So I had a big fight, and I went to Arun Jaitley. Says these guys are ready. You got to play them. If you don't, if they are good enough, why wait? Let them be under 19. But if they are better than the guys who are there in the camp, right. so I forced these guys to play uh, the Ranji Trophy that year when they played together. So, you know, so I feel very, very proud that you know these guys developed so fast. Uh, but uh, yeah, suddenly you know Delhi cricket is on a high, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Time for a quick break, friends. We'll continue our discussion with Atul on the other side of this break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Cricket on Air friends. Today we are having a free and frank discussion with former India fast bowler Atul Wasan. Well, let's come back to you Atul and uh, you know t- t- talk a bit about what you are up to nowadays. Well, you know I I'm doing a lot of cricket. I love analyzing the game and and with new uh, avenues opening up uh, with the mobile content I was doing a lot of uh, uh, 3G updates and I was doing um, analysis shows for various channels. So it just gives me an opportunity to be in touch with the game. I don't have the patience to be a coach or a administrator or a <laughs> or a selector. So this is the way I can be associated and I follow each and every game I have to because I have to speak on it and I have to watch the game. and uh, but i've got my own um, uh, business now i've moved on because we didn't have ipl so we had to make a living after we retired we used to get uh, i remember the first ranji trophy game i i played we got 340 rupees <laughs> wow. and the last wow. ranji trophy g- i i played in 98 99 for 12 years we moved uh, we had moved up to 3000 rupees so <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so you can't live on that so um, uh, unfortunately that was a uh, that was a sad part of indian cricket but now with ipl I mean, a few years if a guy can play top top level cricket, he is set for life, and I feel so. And, and, and I can't complain because the spillover has come to us also, and I <laughs> I feel nice that the game has progressed, has become so big, and we are the world champions with a Test number one team. And what more can somebody ask for? Would you have loved to play the IPL? Actually, yes, because this this is the kind of game I used to play. I used to eventually I I started batting at number eleven for Delhi and number ten for India. I moved up to, for opening for Delhi in in one day matches and I scored few hundreds as well. Wow. So I mean, this is the kind of game I used to play. Slam bang game, you know. I was sent up sent as a pinch hitter and uh, and the kind of bowling. I think I would have been uh, pretty good at it. Well, I, I was going to ask you a question on similar lines about returning back to cricket because we are recently we have heard that Martin Crow is back. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> No, no, I've got no delusions of grandeur there. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy playing my. I am happy playing my veterans cricket. <laughs> I play a few games a year, and and you know, suddenly this new tournament has started in West Indies, where over 35s have started playing the T20 World Cup. We played last year; it was amazing to get back on the field and be playing against Courtney Walsh and uh, Curtly Ambrose and wow. uh, Bran Larite was amazing. You know, we all got together and um, uh, we had a great time. Sanaj Jaisuria and England; it was everybody was there. So it was been nice. I'm looking forward to this year's edition, and I think few matches are in Jamaica as well, and Australia is joining the fray this year. So uh, that's I'm preparing for that. <laughs> that's interesting, and I have to ask you this: We are talking to you here in America. Yeah. How has been your experience of America? How are you enjoying life here? I love it. You know, I mean, I've been coming here for a long time. Uh, I played cricket few times there. We used to come very often to play in uh, in Los Angeles area and East East um, East Coast as well. Okay. And a uh, lot of Asian diaspora here, Sri Lankans, even the West Indian community plays. I've lot, played a lot of cricket in. Uh, in uh, toronto winnipeg vancouver you know so i've been i've been associated i just thought that you know cricket will mature more in these parts and somehow i can't understand why the us Cr- cricket federation has not actually organized a better uh, thing here where there will be i i can see in the future a big cricket uh, uh, international matches happening here why hasn't happened so f- so far uh, you know beats me interesting any plans of playing cricket here in california <laughs> 
unless you're having a veteran tournament, why not? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, but I play a game and then I'm stiff for four days. You know, it's, it's a hard sport. People, for, it looks an easy sport watching on television, but let me tell you, uh, it is a hard sport. You know, and especially for fast bowlers. <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah, well, bowl, they are they are the poor guys. You know, the, you know, they're just there uh, to just um, go for runs and make people happy. You know, so it's a it's a batsman's game. <laughs> There's a reason why they call fast bowlers uh, work horses. <laughs> work horses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, but but um, very fulfilling, you know, when when you are fit, when you're running, and you get a player out of you, or if you see a player is scared of you, you know, that's a high. <laughs> that's great. Thank you, Atul. Thank you so much for talking to Cricket on Air. Welcome.